the first bit is on line sensors. Now, most of you probably know about the Warriors, and we've got four kids come around on a Tuesday evening and we build mice. And the mouse we build is called Wilf, which is Warrior's Intelligent Line Follower. And this is the sensor array that we've got. The idea was that um, we'd build everything in modules so we could reuse it on a future mouse. So the line sensors plug in and there are five pairs of LEDs and, in this case, phototransistors that we use for sensing the lines. So we've effectively got ten identical line sensors looking down um, on the line. Now on 10 millimetre spacing, same as the line width. Okay. Now, obviously we want a mouse that's competitive. So that's the first thing. We want to be able to reuse it. We want it to be explainable. So we don't want too much high-tech stuff in there. No, no complicated equations that are difficult to explain. We calibrate the sensor at startup, so when, you, when the kids put the mouse in the maze it does a circle and it measures the reflectance that it's got all the way around and it makes a note of the, the biggest uh, value it's seen and the smallest value it's seen and then whenever it takes a reading it subtracts the smallest value and calibrates it so that uh, any subsequent reading is going to lay in the range of zero when it's on the black and 1,000 when it's fully on the line. So all of our numbers are scaled to 0 to 1,000 before we start. L1 is the leftmost sensor, L10 is the rightmost sensor. Right, uh, what have I missed? Okay. Now... We start off using bang-bang control. So the, the two middle sensors are on the line most of the time when you're in the right place. Next one's out. If they hit the line, you make a correction to the speed. So if the, the right-hand one comes onto the line, you speed up the left motor and slow down the right motor. So bang-bang away along the line. Um, that works. They run it in Hazelmere, and when everybody else was getting round in about 20 seconds, they were lucky to hit 45, but it was all right, it got round, the kids understood it. The next stage was to go to the next sensors out. So L3 and L8, they looked at those, and if they were on the line, they made a harder turn. So this is starting to get towards proportional control. And that allowed them to go a bit faster. No, the analog inputs are giving us numbers in the range 0 to 1,000. 0 is on the black, 1,000 is on the white. Fully on the white. Uh, right. This is all obvious, easy to explain. Um, and the kids pick it up really fast. There's no problem. Right? Now, the next stage after that would be what I call the Palulu method, because I think that's where I first came across it, or Tony's method. Right. Now, I really don't like this. I don't know why you would have this sensor if you're going to multiply it by zero. Whoops. I'm old enough to have programmed on horrible slow 8-bit processors where division takes about three hours. And there is always the problem of what happens if this is zero. So I don't understand it. How can I explain it to the kids? This method works, but for a, only for a pair of sensors, and we've got a lot more than that. So if we look at what a sensor can see, this is, um, if you like, a simulation of what the sensor can see. This is a, a, a cosine curve, because that's vaguely something like um, what you would expect it to be. And when you're dead on the centre of the line, you get maximum. This would be my thousand in terms of my numbers. And when you're not on the line at all, you're getting zero. And in between, you get something vaguely this, this shape. Okay. Um, this is millimetres. 
So real sensors would be a bit different to that, but the general idea is the same. If you stick two of them on, so this is the next sensor across. Right? Same shape, just moved uh, right by 10 millimetres. If you subtract one from the other, this is the Tony Wilcox method, as I call it. And you get this beautiful linear bit in the middle. Hmm. That's exactly what you want. And I guess most of you with two sensors are using something like this. Yeah. It's fine here, but it goes horrible there. Hmm. Once you get into this bit, uh, life gets hard. And you can't get far off the line. If you're more than five millimetres off the line, you're in a horrible area. You actually want to be able to take the tight corners as far away from the line as you can still retain control. Um, because obviously you can go faster. So that's, that's the next stage. Oh, hang on. Right. To get rid of that problem, if you take the six sensors that we've got that we can use, the outer four, by and large, we're going to be using those for looking at markers and stuff like that. But the middle six we can use for line following and ideally they've all got the same shape response and it looks a bit like that. If you take, if you add together the left three and add together the right three and subtract the right three from the left three, you get something like this. This bit is exactly what you had before. These bits they're okay, you can go quite a way off the line and still know that you should be accelerating back towards the line. You haven't got the fold over coming here, you've got the fold over coming a lot more millimetres away from the line. And that works, and I haven't done anything I can't explain yet. Okay. We ran with that, it, it worked fine, the kids understood it. <coughs> Of course, we want to make the best use of the outer sensors, and then you go to this. So this is the L3 sensor times one. That's the L3, L2 sensor times two, and that's the L1 sensor times three. Subtracting, so that's the blue one, and the red one is next one out times one, next one out times two, next one out times three. So the further you away you get from the line, the bigger your number you get from the sensor. Yeah. Subtract this one from that one, that's what you got. I don't think I've done anything that you can't explain to an 11-year-old. Okay, it jiggles a bit, doesn't really matter. Depending on the sensors you've actually used and the distance from the line, will determine what that jiggle is anyway. You could tune it. We, we've got a height adjustment on the mouse. Um, so that's what it is. How Scaled. Did, hmm? How did you factor the spacing between the loads have on that? How did I determine it? No, no, how, 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 you tell you for 10 mil spacing between yeah. sensors. If you made that say 15, would that make it better on the loads? Or? Well, you've got a possible problem that you've got a gap between the sensors you know so the the jiggles between the sensor overlaps would be worse yeah you want them to be sort of matched okay um, the formula doesn't have any divisions anything can be zero it doesn't matter it's just what we do it's what the kids use and they got quite quick by the time they came here so it's not a better algorithm or anything like that. It's just a simpler algorithm, easier to understand. Okay, I'm rattling through things because I'm aware that we're short of time. Uh, everybody happy? Any questions on that? I'm going to move on to the next bit.